Hello grade 9s. Today I'm going to discuss with you the answers to the questions um, to the quiz that I gave you last time and in which the questions involve proving trigonometric identities and solving trigonometric equations. Before we go to the questions, let us recall the basic trigonometric identities. So we have cosecant x is equal to 1 over sine x, secant x is equal to 1 over cosine x, and cotangent x equals 1 over tangent x. So these are the reciprocal identities. Next, we have the quotient identities. One of those is tangent x equals sine x over cosine x, and cotangent x equals cos x over sine x. The last set will be the Pythagorean identities. So the common one is sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. You can actually manipulate this in such a way that sine squared x will become the subject. So with that, uh, we will have sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. So similarly, we can do that for cosine squared, squared x. Next is 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x, and 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. Now let's go to the questions. So this is the first question. Prove cosecant x bracket cosecant x minus sine x plus sine x minus cosine x over sine x equals cosecant squared x minus cotangent x. So um, remember when we are proving identities, uh, we have to make sure that the left-hand side is exactly identical to the right-hand side. So there are three strategies. The first one is manipulate or simplify the left-hand side to make it exactly identical to the right-hand side, So, which means you're not touching the right-hand side. Second strategy, strategy is it's the right-hand side that we are manipulating or simplifying to make it exactly identical to the right-hand side. And of course, the last one is you can manipulate or simplify both uh, sides to make them uh, equal to a certain expression. But looking at this, we can manipulate the left-hand side because uh, I think you would agree with me because the left-hand side is the one that looks more complicated. Okay, so let's do that. Let's manipulate the left-hand side. So this is the left-hand side. So uh, first thing that you need to do is to expand by distributing the cosecant x to inside a bracket. And what we will have is cosecant squared x minus 1 plus sine x over sine x minus cosine x over sine x. Okay, so let's simplify. So sine x over sine x will become 1 cosine x over sine x will become cotangent x, okay? So uh, we can add combine negative 1 plus 1, that becomes 0, and we will have cosecant squared x minus cotangent x, which is actually the right-hand side. So in this case, we have already proven the identity, okay? Good. Let's move on to... Question 1b. So this is uh, question 1b, which is also proving. Uh, tangent squared x plus 1 plus tangent x times secant x is equal to 1 plus sine x all over cosine squared x. So they, usually the one with uh, sine x and cosine x is an expression that is already somewhat simplified. So if you look at the right-hand side, so that means we don't need to touch that. Uh, let's opt to simplify, manipulate the left-hand side, all right? So this will now be, okay, uh, okay, so the left-hand side is tangent squared x plus 1 plus tangent x secant x. Okay, so uh, one strategy to simplify this is to um, ensure that the expressions are simplified to become sine and cosine in terms of sine and cosine. Of course, 
this is just one way there could be another way of doing this so tangent squared x is uh, the identity is it, it, it becomes sine squared x over cosine squared x then plus 1 tan x is sine x over cosine x secant x is 1 over cosine x okay so looking at this we can multiply this two will become cosine squared x so let's combine everything into just a single fraction um, and it will become like this so cosine squared x divided by cosine squared x multiplied to this is just uh, as it is cosine squared x divided by 1 is cosine squared x times uh, 1 is cosine squared x and cosine squared x divided by this is just 1 multiplied to sine x will be sine x so notice that this is a Pythagorean identity and that is just equal to 1 and we will have now 1 plus sine x all over cosine, uh, cosine squared x and that is our right hand side so here we have already proven the identity okay so uh, doing good so far now let's go to question 2a so question 2a this time we are going to solve 5 cosine squared x is equal to 4 plus sine x for x is less than 0 degree x is more than 0 degree but less than 180 degrees okay so um, here we okay so if you look at this equation so there's cosine x there's also sine x so there are two expressions involved so one strategy is we have to make sure that the equation is expressed in just a single exp single trigonometric expression so we know that cosine squared x has an is an identity that is equal to 1 minus sine squared x so we can use that all right so uh, this is how it's going to look like so 5 1 minus sine squared x is equal to 4 plus sine x all right so distribute 5 inside so 5 minus 5 sine squared x is equal to 4 plus sine x and then notice that we have a de second degree so this can now become a quadratic equation so 5 sine squared x plus sine x minus 1 is equal to 0 now um, to make it look easier you can let y be equal to sine x and we will now have 5y squared plus y minus 1 is equal to 0 alright so you have a way for you to determine if this is factorable or not or by looking at it uh, you would know if it is uh, factorable or not so to be safe let's use the quadratic formula so quadratic formula it will become like this solving it and then you will have y is equal to negative 1 plus minus square root of 21 all over 10 so the roots are irrational um, okay now you let y be sine x so then let's go back to it we will now have two equations so one is sine x equals negative 1 plus square root of 21 over 10 the other one is sine x equals negative 1 minus square root of 21 over 10 so let's solve each equation so x equals sine inverse use your calculator and then you will get x is equal to 21.0 degrees so in um, in IGCSC additional maths uh, you have to make sure that your degree is rounded off to one decimal degree your angle is rounded off to one decimal degree so x is equal to 21.0 degree all right so now the question is is that the only answer okay definitely not because your angle uh, okay so sine is also positive in quadrant 2 so looking at this your angle X must be between 0 to 180 degrees so that means there is another solution that is in quadrant 2 so how do we do that for us to find it the other angle will be X equals 180 degrees minus 21 degree equals 159.0 degree so there are two solutions all right 
Now, what about the other equation? So sine x equals negative 1 minus square root of 21 over 10. So if you get the decimal value of this, you will get a negative uh, value. So sine x is equal to negative value. Um, that means the angle x must be in quadrant 3 or quadrant 4. So in short, there will be no solution within, within the given domain. Because this one, the given domain, your x will be in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Therefore, the answers are 21.0 degree and 159.0 degree. Alright, so if you do have questions, please just um, uh, let me know. Okay, give me a message. Send me a message if you do have questions. Now, questions, uh, question 2B. Hence or otherwise, solve 5 sine squared x is equal to 4 plus cosine x. Okay, so uh, the equation here looks very similar to looks very similar to question 2a, okay? But this one is cosine squared x. In question 2b, this becomes sine squared x. This is sine x in two, question 2a, then becomes cosine x in question 2b, all right? So, and then looking at this hence, so whenever you see this hence, I, I've always told you that you are going to get a hint or the answers are working from the previous question, you will have, you, you, you should use that to answer this question to be. But you can also see here otherwise. So that means the other method or any other method will be acceptable. Okay, but to make our, to, to make our working easier. So as I said, this one looks like, uh, the equation given in question 2a. So 5 sine squared x, sorry this is not theta, this should be x, is equal to 4 plus cosine x. So it looks very similar to question 2a, so you can use the working that you use in question 2a. So this will give us, or this will can be simplified to a quadratic equation 5 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. All right? And definitely you can also use your solutions to the quadratic equation from question 2a giving us cosine x now equals to negative 1 plus minus square root of 21 over 10. All right, giving you now two equations, cosine x is equal to negative 1 plus square root of 21 over 10 and the other one is cosine x equals negative 1 minus square root of 21 over 10. So solving this using your calculator, your scientific calculator, um, this one is positive. So cosine is positive, cosine x is positive. That means your angle x must be in quadrant one, and that will give that will this will give you x equals sixty nine point zero degree. While this one cosine x is equal to a negative value, and your x must be or your angle x within this domain must be in quadrant 2. Alright, so using your calculator, it will give you now x equals 123.9 degree. Alright, so therefore the answers are 69.0 degree and 123.9 degree.